as humans, we all like to have the best of everything. If you're going to get a car, you want the best that you can find. If you're going to uh, a restaurant, you want to eat the best you can. If you buying clothes, you want to get the best that you can. So we humans like to have the best. We don't want to knowingly take uh, a second or third rate if we don't have to. We want the best. And if you own a, a very expensive car that breaks down, you don't want just somebody who knows something about cars. You want the best. You get the top-of-the-line mechanic. If it's an expensive car, you want the best. But the one place that we have all humans have pretty well decided we're not interested in having the best, and that is in theology, in religion. You're not interested in having the best. You're interested in what you're interested in. Your religion is what it is that, you know, you are what it is you are, and you're not interested in having the best, because the best is someone who has studied the subject for some 59 years, somebody who has gone into all the intricacies of where these ideas and churches and belief systems have all come from and what the priesthoods mean and what the words and the terms and the symbols mean. That would be somebody you would want to talk to before you go into court. Somebody, before you go in and join a, a religion, you might want to talk to somebody who's studied it for many, many years. But most people are not interested in doing that. They just get hooked into a car. They're either born into it, and of course that's the most important thing in, in a human's life. It depends on where you were born as to what you believe. You know, If you were born in China, then you would have Chinese culture in your bloodline, in your family, and you'd have the Chinese ideas and thinking. And, uh, you know, uh, it would not be something different or strange to you. This is who you are. You're Chinese, and you're born into a Chinese community. Unless, of course, you were black and born into a black community in Africa. You would have your own concepts and ideas that are that are part of the culture of your people. Unless, of course, you were born in Russia or Hawaii or Alaska or you know, wherever. It just depends on where were you were born and what culture you were born into, and what they believed, and that's who you are today. Does that mean that what you believe is true? No, that just means that's who you are. And therefore, my idea is it doesn't matter who you are and where you were born. Why don't you go back to school and learn how to read, and then think, and become very critical in your intellectual understanding of where things come from. Why do we have banks? Why do we have police departments? Why do we have to get a degree from a university uh, before you can be a minister and talk about Jesus? You have to have a degree. You've got to get the imprimatur of Caesar on you, on you and you have to have a diploma. And you have to graduate, which comes from two words, gradually indoctrinate. And so why do you have to submit yourself to all of this man-made governmental religious systems in order to operate? I mean, did Jesus go to the college? I mean, did the 12 apostles go to the university to get a degree so they could, uh, could, they, so they could preach? And so you begin to ask questions, and the more questions you ask, the more obvious it becomes that we humans have been tricked from the day we were born. We came into a world that was already nailed down, chiseled in concrete, and already decided. So you need to go along to get along. You need to be in compliance with the, with the powers that be. And therefore, you're not born free like an animal. You're born free. No, you're not born free. You're born into a man-made system. And you either go along to get along or you don't get a job. You go to school so you can get a diploma, and therefore you go to college, and now you get a work permit that lets you go out and earn it and get a job. Unless, of course, you, uh, you know, you're thinking for yourself and you don't have a diploma and a work permit. 
So I learned a long time ago, the entire world today on the earth <clears throat> is being guided by demonic depravity, lies, deception, and uh, you know, government secret societies, fraternal orders, organized crime. And this is why the human race in general around the world uh, turns to drugs, alcohol, violence. Uh, we go to, uh, you know, in America we love watching cage fights where men lock themselves in a cage and, and, and try and kill each other and destroy each other. Uh, why? It's because this is the anxiety in the human. We know we're not free. And all humans want to be free. We're born free. But we're immediately sucked into some system, and then before you know it, that's who you are, and you don't ever change, and you don't ever question why it is you believe what you do. And so you're just a part of the problem now. One more of the 7.5 billion people on the earth uh, with an IQ of 40, having no idea in the world what it is you really you are doing, where you've been, where you're going, and when you die, where you're going to leave to. <clears throat> so I've just decided a long time ago when I was a kid to start doing my own thinking. And the more I began to look into the whole world of theology, it began, it began to become very clear to me that you need to go back and do your homework. You need to stand up on your own and by yourself and do your own research and begin to formulate your own ideas for yourself. And don't accept any man-made organization's ideas because when you... One day when you wake up and find out whatever it is, whatever church you have uh, put yourself into, whatever religious belief you have accepted, and then you find out that it was a lie, it was not true at all, it was man-made, uh, then what are you going to do? You know, wait till you're almost ready to leave this world, and then you begin to think about where am I going? What have I done with my life? Nothing. You haven't done anything. You just went along to get along, and all your friends that you lived for and, and what they were out telling you and what they wanted you to believe, you, you bought into it. And now that they're all dead and gone and you are in the old folks' home at 90 years old, you don't know where, what's going on. You have no idea what, what the religion was all about, what government was all about. As a matter of fact, you didn't know anything. You just drank a lot of beer and shot a lot of dope and watched a lot of uh, sitcoms. But your whole life was worthless, period. And this is something I'm not interested in. I want to know. When you go to church, they ask you, are you a believer? Or how long have you been a believer? This is what in churches they ask you, if you're a believer. I say, no, I'm not a believer. I want to know. Like government. Government doesn't care to be a believer. Government has CIA, NSA, and about 15 other underworld criminal organizations that watch everything you do. So they don't want to believe you're okay. They want to damn well know who you are. So there's a big difference between believing something and damn well knowing for sure where these ideas have come from. And this is what I do. I question authority. I question the whole idea of royalty, people who are royal, who drive around in limos and gold chariots and flip their cigarettes out on you and your children. And they, they live in, in luxury while you are trying to stay alive. Uh, this is insanity, the insanity of royalty, the insanity of holy men and holy righteous people. 